Today, I'm finally answering the questions so many people have been asking me ever since I started making Mario Kart videos. How are you tilting this much on gliders? This is called motion glider, and it makes me go faster on almost every glider section. It requires motion controls to be turned on. Do you have motion controls always turned on? Yes. But how can you play with motion controls always on? Doesn't that mess up your driving when the controller tilts? No, it does not mess up my driving because I use a GameCube controller. Wait, how do you do motion controls on a GameCube controller? Don't all the good players use the Pro Controller? Is the GameCube controller secretly better? Alright, let's slow down there. Today, I will answer all of these questions and more. In this video, I'm going to show you why the GameCube controller may be the best controller for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. When starting out with a Nintendo Switch, you probably used Joy-Cons. Unless you have faulty Joy-Cons, these are actually perfectly fine for Mario Kart, but most top-level players prefer to use the Pro Controller. And if you're wondering which controller to get, we could end the discussion right there. The Pro Controller is great. Clearly, it's working out for the top players, just like how it's working out for them to embrace the Yoshi hive mind. But today, we're going to take a step back and ask if the Pro Controller is really the best controller for Mario Kart. At a high level of play, the GameCube controller actually has advantages, but also disadvantages when compared to the Pro Controller. However, for new players, I do think the GameCube controller is definitely easier to learn on. We'll talk about each of the pros and cons in depth, but first, let's take a look at the GameCube controller itself in case you're unfamiliar. Now, I know what some of you guys are thinking, the GameCube controller is so old. It came out in 2001, but somehow it has stood the test of time. Nintendo still sells this controller, and it is still commonly used by Super Smash Bros. Ultimate players, which is played on the Nintendo Switch. So yes, this controller is old, but it is also legit. Here's what each of the buttons do. The layout is similar enough to a Pro Controller that if you wanted to switch, you would have no problems picking this up right away. But there are a few key differences. The GameCube controller only has one shoulder button on the left side instead of two. Also, some buttons are missing. The left stick has notches for the cardinal and diagonal directions. And finally, the GameCube controller has no motion sensor. Keep these last two points in mind because they are key to the advantages of the GameCube controller. Also, please use the Z button to drift and don't use R. Thanks to the GameCube controller, every time I reach a glider section, I can do this, while nobody else can. And this is the fastest way to move on a glider. But why is this faster? You might think that moving in a straight line should be the fastest path. And it looks like that's actually correct. Moving diagonally does not help you go forward any faster, but the gliders are designed weirdly in this game, and moving diagonally does actually give you a higher total speed. The problem is, this higher speed is not in the forward direction. But you can simply rotate your cart angle, and now you're actually saving time thanks to the diagonal speed bonus. This technique is called glider vectoring. This is what glider vectoring is supposed to look like. Drift off a glider, hold diagonally up in the direction you want to go, and then straighten out by holding down. Doing this saves a fraction of a second on each glider compared to just doing a trick. But my glider vectoring looks like this. I can tilt way more and this gives me much higher diagonal speed which saves even more time. But how am I getting this extra tilt? To do this, you need motion controls turned on. If you are using Joy-Cons or the Pro Controller, you can now control your vehicle in two different ways, by using the left stick and by tilting your controller. For some reason, on a glider, the game combines your left stick and your tilt, allowing for a crazy angle when moving sideways. This is called motion glider, and it is the fastest way to move on a glider. The only problem with this is motion controls. See, you'd really rather have motion controls turned off during regular driving, which is most of the time, because even the slightest controller tilt and your driving can get messed up. It's very hard to keep your controller steady enough for this to not affect your gameplay. In fact, Mario Kart speedrunners will pause the game in the middle of their time trial to activate motion controls, then they do the glider section, then pause again to turn motion controls off. Although a bit annoying, this is fine for time trials, but in an online race, you cannot do this on every glider because the game does not pause online. So with the Pro Controller, most players just don't do motion glider. 
But remember what I said about the GameCube controller? It does not have a motion sensor, which means it does not have this problem. However, it can still input tilt controls. All you have to do is use the D-pad with motion controls turned on. As soon as my mini turbo comes out, I move my right thumb from the A button over to the D-pad and hold the same diagonal as the left stick for that extra tilt. After a moment, I can hold down on the left stick and return my right thumb to the A button. And in case you were wondering, this works because you do not need to hold A in a glider. Then when I return to normal ground, I don't have to worry about my controller tilt. This allows me to easily do motion glider on every single glider. Now, I'm not saying that the Pro Controller can't do motion glider in online races. It absolutely can, but you have to plan carefully around how and when to use it. For example, on Mario Kart Stadium, you can activate motion controls when you enter the glider and use three mushrooms to do this. But unless it's lap 3, you're now stuck with having motion controls on until you can find a convenient time to turn it off. I remember when I first learned about advanced techniques in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, I learned about Motion Glider, and I thought to myself, wow, that seems like a very cool, but very annoying mechanic to use, and it sucks that I'll never get to use it. But thanks to the GameCube controller, I can use Motion Glider all the time, and if you watch my gameplay videos, I have been using it for the last year. Drifting is the most important technique for driving fast in Mario Kart because drifting allows you to charge up mini turbos. As you drift longer, you will charge up higher levels of mini turbo, but your mini turbo charge speed is not always the same. It depends on how sharply you drift. If you drift sharp, your mini turbo charges fast. If you drift shallow, it charges slow. Most turns in this game are just not that sharp, which makes it hard to maintain a fast charge speed. If you want to charge up a better mini turbo, you might end up overturning. However, there is a way to charge mini turbos faster without turning super sharp. This is called soft drifting. Let's say you're drifting to the right. This is the region your left stick has to be in for you to get the fast charge speed. Turns out, holding full right is not necessary. Holding the stick at a diagonal still gives you a fast charge speed, but also a softer drift angle, and that's why it's called soft drifting. A pro controller's left stick has a circular border, so there is no indication as to where your left stick needs to be to soft drift, and you pretty much have to guess. Too low, and you're drifting sharper than necessary. Too high, and you get a slow charge speed and you won't know if you did it correctly until the mini turbo either charges or it doesn't. On a GameCube controller, there are notches at the diagonals. However, these notches are not supposed to work for soft drifting. If we zoom in on the diagram, it turns out that holding your left stick exactly at 45 degrees falls outside of the fast charging zone. But I discovered a way we can pinpoint the optimal soft drifting coordinates using the notches built into the controller. Here's how it's done. You can reset the controller by holding X, Y, and Start for a few seconds, or you can unplug and replug in the controller. The left stick on a GameCube controller is really weird. Whenever you reset the controller, it takes the current left stick position and sets that to be the new neutral position. Usually, the left stick is already in the neutral position, so nothing interesting happens. The neutral position gets set to neutral. But what if I reset the controller like this? I'm still holding the stick upwards, but my controller thinks that that is the neutral position. If I drop the stick back down to the real neutral position, it thinks I am pressing the stick downwards because I have moved the stick downwards to get there. In other words, all the coordinates have been shifted downwards. Yeah, I know, it's a bit confusing, but it does make sense, and you can pause if you want to think about that for a moment. But let me show you what I do every single time I start playing Mario Kart. I hold a very, very slight upward angle, and then reset the controller. Now, when I try to hit the up diagonal notches, the controller thinks I'm at a slightly lower spot, which falls into the fast charging zone for mini turbos. My controller notches now give me the perfect soft drifting angle. Anytime I want to drift to the right, I can use the up diagonal notch to do soft drifting. If I want to drift at a shallow angle, I hold full left. These are the main two directions you'll want to use when drifting to the right. And similarly, if I was drifting to the left, I would use the up left diagonal to charge my mini turbo, and full right if I want to straighten out. This is the best way to charge up mini turbos on almost every turn in the game, and it is very easy thanks to the GameCube controller's diagonal notches. And that's why you see me resetting my controller in some videos. My soft drifting notches don't work by default, and I hold slightly up while I reset to get them working again. 
So, the GameCube controller makes soft drifting easier to learn and a lot more consistent. But remember, the Pro controller can also soft drift. You just have to memorize the thumb positioning instead of simply pushing towards the notches. It's much harder with the Pro controller at first, but if you play enough, then soft drifting will become just as natural on a Pro controller. So at top level play, the GameCube controller has no advantage for soft drifting. But for most people, I think having a controller that gives you 100% consistent soft drifting is a pretty big deal. Okay, we dove very deep into the mechanics of Mario Kart, but I think it was necessary to show why the GameCube controller has a clear advantage for Motion Glider, as you can save time compared to Pro Controller users on every glider, and without having to deal with the inconsistency of having motion controls activated at all times. And you also never need to pause the game to turn on motion controls mid-race. On top of that, the GameCube controller has an easier time with soft drifting, especially when you're learning it for the first time. So with all this in mind, does this make the GameCube controller better? Well, not exactly. Let's talk about the disadvantages that come with using the GameCube controller. Tricking in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is weird, because there's no dedicated trick button. I mean, the right shoulder button does do a trick, but it also does a hop, and this can be a problem. If you try to trick too early, then you'll just hop over the trickable region, and pressing the button again will not give you a trick because now you're in the air. You just missed the trick. But there is another way to do a trick, and that is by shaking your controller. Unlike pressing the right shoulder button, this will not cause you to hop, and this is especially good on sections with multiple tricks where it's hard to tell where you can and cannot trick. And in case you didn't know this, when watching your favorite Mario Kart YouTubers, you can actually tell when they shake trick. Remember, the GameCube controller does not have a motion sensor, so you cannot shake trick. The Pro Controller can shake trick, which makes it easier and more consistent on several tracks. There is something to be said about the lack of feature compatibility between the GameCube controller and the Nintendo Switch. This is not an actual downside to using the GameCube controller for Mario Kart, but it is something you should keep in mind if you're considering switching. The GameCube controller does not let you remap buttons. This is really not a big deal as the control scheme is already very comfortable. Remapping is common on the Pro Controller, but mainly for remapping pause to a shoulder button to make it easier to turn motion controls on mid-race, and with a GameCube controller, you'll never have to do that. The GameCube controller is lacking the home button and the screenshot or record button, but this is fine as I keep Joy-Cons near me at all times in case I need to use these buttons. And finally, the GameCube controller requires an adapter to be able to connect to the Nintendo Switch. In the description, I'll have a link to the controller and adapter that I use. It's very easy to set up, and I'll show you later in this video. So, which controller is better for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe? The GameCube controller or the Pro controller? Let's review the advantages of both. The GameCube controller makes it easy to use the motion glider technique on any glider without the downsides of having motion controls activated. The GameCube controller also makes soft drifting incredibly easy and perfectly consistent, which may be important for many players, but this is not an advantage at the top level. The Pro Controller can shake trick, which makes tricking more consistent on several tracks. Now before I tell you which controller I think is better, remember that I am not a top player, so take my opinion for what it is. I am a good Mario Kart player, and I am very knowledgeable about the game, but I should never convince you that a top player would perform better on either controller. I simply cannot know the answer to that. And plus, in reality, it barely makes a difference between the two. But with that being said, my opinion is that the GameCube controller is slightly better at all levels of play. The GameCube controller opens up an entire mechanic that is Motion Glider, which you can use to save time on almost every glider. On the other hand, the Pro Controller's shake tricking does help with inconsistent trick ramps, but there are just far more gliders in this game than there are places where shake tricking really helps. I think that having access to Motion Glider saves more time on average than shake tricking, and that is the reason why I think the GameCube controller is better. And if you don't use the GameCube controller, I have a question for you. Does the idea of Motion Glider on every glider sound appealing? Does that make you even just consider switching for a moment? I mean, it doesn't matter that much which controller you use, but as someone who plays on the GameCube controller, I cannot imagine switching to a Pro Controller. Sure, I would be able to shake trick, which is useful sometimes, but I would also have to lock Motion Glider in a box and throw it away. Motion Glider is one of my favorite mechanics in this game, and I get that it was probably an unintentional mechanic, which is why even the Pro 
Pro Controller doesn't have an easy way to do it, but the fact that the GameCube controller can do motion glider so easily thanks to lacking a motion sensor was definitely also unintentional, and those two stupid things cancel each other out, and what we have in the end is a beautiful way to play Mario Kart. Now, this next part is very important if you play with a GameCube controller. If you start your Switch but do not connect a controller with a motion sensor, you will activate doubled inputs with your left stick. What this means is your left stick will do both normal inputs and motion inputs at the same time, meaning you can do motion glider without the D-pad. But if you then connect a controller with a motion sensor, doubled inputs will turn off, and you will have to go back to using your D-pad. At first, doubled inputs sounds great. I mean, why would you want to use the D-pad when you could just not? But having constant motion inputs will cause you to also have motion hops. Okay, we don't have time to explain the pros and cons of motion hops, but basically you'll turn more when hopping to the side. But another consequence of doubled inputs is you will turn sharper when soft drifting. This is very, very bad. So after you turn on your switch, make sure you also power on a controller with a motion sensor, and this will turn off doubled inputs. I've known about doubled inputs for months, but I only ever had it on by accident and I never knew how to turn it off. I thought it wasn't a big deal, but then I watched this video, which not only taught me how to disable doubled inputs, but is also where I learned about the soft drifting problem. And now I realize that's why some of my off days feel so off. Okay, one more important thing, if you're going to buy a GameCube controller, avoid cheap third-party GameCube controllers. I bought the cheapest one I could find just to test it out, and here's what I found. The official Nintendo GameCube controller's left stick has all the possible input values, but the cheap GameCube controller does not. There is a giant dead zone that is all considered neutral, and getting close to the diagonal notch will lock you into it. Besides the obvious problem of not being able to control your cart properly anymore, the controller reset technique for soft drifting also does not work. I did not buy all the third-party controllers, so I cannot tell you which ones will or will not work, but the official Nintendo controller that I have linked in the description does work, and I know this because I bought one recently just to test it out, and now it's my main controller for Mario Kart. I have also linked the adapter I used to connect it to the Switch. Just set the adapter to the Wii U or Nintendo Switch setting, plug the black cord of the adapter into the Switch dock, and plug your controller into the adapter. That's all you need to do. Also, I apologize for the delay, but the Pro Guide is coming out soon. It's just that I thought about it, and I really wanted this video to come out first so I could talk about Motion Glider in the Pro Guide without it being this magical technique that is off-limits, which I really think needs to change, because this is so fun, and it's not even that difficult. Well, only on the GameCube controller.